rhythm may be neutralized by an application of the art of polarization, the Kabbalion. As we have explained in previous chapters, the Hermetists hold that the principle of rhythm manifest on the mental plane as well as on the physical plane, and that the bewildering succession of moods, feelings, emotions, and other mental states are due to the backward and forward swing of the mental pendulum, which carries us from one extreme of feeling to the other. The Hermetist also teach that the law of neutralization enables one, to a great extent, to overcome the operation of rhythm in consciousness. As we have explained, there is a higher plane of consciousness as well as the ordinary lower plane, and the master, by rising mentally to the higher plane, causes the swing of the mental pendulum to manifest on the lower plane, and he, dwelling on his higher plane, escapes the consciousness of the swing backward. This is effected by polarizing on the higher self, and thus raising the mental vibrations of the ego above those of the ordinary plane of, sub of consciousness. It is akin to rising above a thing and allowing it to pass beneath you. The advanced hermitist polarizes him himself at the positive pole of his being, the I am pole, rather than the pole of personality. And by refusing and denying the operation of rhythm, raisin, raises his self above its plane of consciousness, and standing firm in his statement of being, he allows the pendulum to swing back on the lower plane without changing his polarity. This is accomplished by all individuals who have attained any degree of self-mastery, whether they understand the law or not. Such persons simply refuse to allow themselves to be swung back by the pendulum of mood or emotion and by steadfastly affirming the superiority, they remain polarized on the positive pole. The master, of course, attains a far greater degree of proficiency because he understands the law which he is overcoming by a higher law, and by the use of his will he attains a degree of poise and mental steadfastness, almost impossible of belief on the part of those who allow themselves to be swung backward and forward by the mental pendulum of moods and feelings. Remember always, however, that you do not really destroy the principle of rhythm, for that is indestructible. You simply overcome one law by counterbalancing it with another, and thus maintain an equilibrium. The laws of balance and counterbalance are in operation on the mental as well as on the physical planes, and an understanding of these laws enables one to seem to overthrow laws, whereas he is merely exerting a counterbalance. Nothing escapes the principle of cause and effect, but there are many planes of causation, and one may use the laws of the higher to overcome the laws of the lower, the Kabbalion. By an understanding of the practice of polarization, the Hermetists rise to a higher plane of causation and thus counterbalance the laws of the lower planes of causation. By rising above the plane of ordinary causes, they become themselves, in a degree, causes instead of being merely caused. By being able to master their own moods and feelings, and by being able to neutralize rhythm, as we have already explained, they are able to escape a great part of the operations of cause and effect on the ordinary plane. The masses of people are carried along, obedient to their environment, the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves, the effect of inherited tendencies, the suggestions of those about them, and other outward causes which tend to move them about on the chessboard of life like mere pawns. By rising above these influencing causes, the advanced hermitist seeks a higher plane of mental action and by dominating their moods, emotions, impulses, and feelings, they create for themselves new characters, qualities, and powers by which they overcome their ordinary environment and thus become practically players instead of mere pawns. Such people help to play the game of life understandingly instead of being moved about this way and that way by stronger influences and powers and wills. They use the principle of cause and effect instead of being used by it. Of course, even the highest 
are subject to the principle as it is as it manifests on the higher planes but on the lower planes of activity they are masters instead of slaves as the Kabbalion says the wise ones serve on the higher but rule on the lower they obey the laws coming from above them but in their own plane and those below them they rule and give orders and yet in so doing they form a part of the principle instead of opposing it the wise man falls in with the law and by understanding its movements he operates it instead of being its blind slave just as does the skilled swimmer turn this way and that way going and coming as he will instead of being as the log which is carried here and there so is the wise man as compared to the ordinary man and yet both swimmer and log wise man and fool are subject to law he who understands this is well on the road to mastery in conclusion let us again call your attention to the hermetic axiom true hermetic transmutation is a mental art the cabalion in the above axiom the Hermitists teach that the great work of influencing one's environment is accomplished by mental power. The universe being wholly mental, it follows that it may be ruled over, ruled only by mentality. And in this truth it is found it is is to be found an explanation of all the phenomena and manifestations of the various mental powers which are attracting so much attention and study in these earlier years of the 20th century. Back of and under the teachings of the various cults and schools remains ever constant the principle of the mental substance of the universe. If the universe be mental, it is in its substantial nature, then it follows that mental transmutation must change the conditions and phenomena of the universe. If the universe is ment mental, then mind must be the highest power affecting its phenomena. If this be understood, then all the so-called miracles and wonder workings are seen plainly for what they are. They are. The all is mind. The universe is mental. And so it ends this cabalion. It's all about we have to enter into the mental understanding. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed reading it to myself and to you at the same time. I think it makes, makes a terrible lot of sense. <laughs> and I will try to live by its precepts. And I just want to mention a little something here since I have a little time, a couple of minutes. But I've heard some fearful talk on the part of people who are really into conspiracy theories who think that this the Kabbalah and the Kabbalion are tools of those who would rule over and be the masters over others like the Illuminati. They, if they would read this book, they would see exactly that that's not true because they could use this same power themselves with their thoughts. Only if their thoughts are going to be fearful, it's just as well they don't. But to think that those who know how to use this ability are out to do them harm is a very wrong concept because the people who understand this way would know that anything that they caused harmful to happen to someone else would come right back on them. And they would know that very well and not do it. And I like this book and I like the, uh, the Hermitist way of looking at things. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed uh, listening to this. If you need to know where you can read it, I can give you the uh, address. I'll, I'll put it in on this last one. I'll put it in in the um, explanation of the book because it's just a um, website where there's many, many books that you can read online for free. That's what I did. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you go now and have a good day, have a good night, have a good life. <laughs> Over and out.